Good morning or uh, good afternoon, depending on where you're at in the world. Looks like we have uh, quite um, a worldly group joining me this morning. <clears throat> we have uh, Arlette from Brazil. They said they're right. Jacobs from Denmark. And I've got a few uh, here locally with me in Hawaii. But uh, aloha and welcome to this uh, second um, Facebook Live from the, augment, uh, the Virtual and Augmented Reality for Education Facebook group. Today I'm going to be focusing on um, CoSpaces EDU and uh, walk you through uh, three uh, tutorials on um, how to create an interactive AR activity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me introduce you and uh, introduce myself first. My name is Michael Fercon II. I'm the I'm the uh, the face behind um, the group as well as um, uh, the person behind AR VR. EDU hub, um, but uh, I, I live in the beautiful state of Hawaii. It's uh, eight o'clock in the morning here. I'm not sure what time it is there, but uh, thanks for joining me um, today for this live broadcast. And um, I'm a K-12 technology integration specialist here in Hawaii for a K-12 private school. And I'm also a K through third grade technology teacher. Uh, my passion, um, aside from teaching and working with elementary students, is networking and sharing, which is why I'm, uh, I'm providing this Facebook Live to all of you today. And uh, I've been presenting on um, EdTech topics for more than 10 years and um, focusing a lot of my attention on um, augmented reality and virtual reality for EDU and presenting and sharing about my exploration and experimentation with those tools uh, for the past three years. And um, CoSpaces EDU is one of my all-time favorites. It's number one on my list of uh, AR and VR creation tools for the classroom. That's why I'm a CoSpaces EDU uh, guru ambassador. Um, so you might, if you're in the CoSpaces EDU community, you might see me in there frequently um, sharing resources and um, supporting uh, members with their questions. Um, but uh, I also use CoSpaces EDU uh, with my students and um, I did uh, lots of great projects over the summer and last school year. Excited to continue using it this year. Um, so uh, let me know if you're using CoSpaces EDU in um, uh, in the comments of this Facebook li uh, Live. I'd love to know who's using it and who's not. It's okay if you're not. Today's a, a great day to learn. Um, and if you are, maybe you'll, uh, you'll learn a few new things today as well. Um, so... Um, this Facebook Live, it's brought to you by um, uh, the ARVR EDU Hub at ARVREDUHub.com. Um, that's my um, uh, AR and VR for education resource site for educators. Um, we've got tons of resources there for CoSpaces EDU, Google Tour Creator, other creation tools. I've got a VR app uh, database. Um, I'm working on an AR app database. I've got, I've got, I have a blog, of course. Lots of resources constantly adding to it, um, so check that out if you haven't done uh, if, you, if you haven't um, seen the website yet. That's arvreduhub.com. I've got more great things coming your way. So what is CoSpaces Edu? Um, it's so it's a uh, it's an AR and VR creation tool that was designed uh, specifically for uh, the classroom in mind. Um, there are lots of AR and VR creation tools out there. Um, there's a handful of really great ones for the classroom. There's lots of them out there for um, professional um, level quality. Um, not that CoSpaces isn't professional level, but um, those you know higher end applications can be quite expensive and are meant for um, you know uh, consumer type products. Um, CoSpaces EDU was designed from the ground up with uh, young to old students in mind, which is uh, uh, what I love in a tool, that the company is um, focused on creating something that students can use specifically. And CoSpaces is that tool. I've been using CoSpaces since it was first released a couple years ago um, as just CoSpaces, and then it transformed into CoSpaces EDU. And um, it's um, it was first released as a web tool. So it was in it was a virtual reality creation tool that you could do through um, a website, which is pretty mind-blowing in itself. To be able to create virtual reality just through a browser 
um, and a website on your laptop. Um, that's, you know, it's, it was pretty much unheard of before that. Um, it's still a, a web tool now. You can access CoSpaces EDU at the website you see there, CoSpaces.io. Um, they now have mobile apps for it as well for um, uh, Android devices and um, iOS devices. So your iPads, your Android tablets, even your mobile phones. Um, another thing I love about CoSpaces EDU is that it's compatible pretty much across um, any device that you have in your classroom and any device you have at home. Um, it's easily accessible across all those devices because it's both a web tool and a mobile application. And you can create um, on pretty much any of those tools. Um, so it makes it really easy uh, to access and to use. And the tool is, is primarily a drag and drop tool, um, which makes it really easy for students to use and to really pick up and go with because um, uh, you know, lots of our students are playing different kinds of video games out there. Lots of those games are a drag and drop system as well. So they're, our students are very much used to that type of system in their lives. And uh, this tool takes advantage of that. Um, so, <clears throat> so let me show you what I'm going to um, share with you today. So uh, the, the name of this Facebook Live is um, uh, Tips and Tricks, How to Create an Interactive AR or Augmented Reality Activity. And uh, with that activity, I'm going to show you how to do th three different kinds of things in CoSpaces EDU. Um, the first is going to be um, how to use CoBlox, which is the programming tool, the block-based programming tool in, within CoSpaces EDU. It's called CoBlox. I'm going to show you how to use CoBlox to make objects interact with each other. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to build and code a clickable button. Um, and then last, if you have the time, hopefully, it's my favorite part, how to create a fun guessing game type quiz in CoSpaces EDU. And I'm going to do this primarily as an augmented reality activity using the CoSpaces EDU Merge Cube add-on. But you, these three things that I'm showing you how to do, you don't, it doesn't, you, you're not required to use a Merge Cube, and you don't have to have the Merge Cube add-on to do these things. I'm just showing you these three things with the Merge Cube add-on because it ties into an activity that I created for my students at the beginning of the school year. And um, it was a, a really popular activity that I shared online, and lots of people were asking me how I did certain things. And so I wanted to uh, create this Facebook Live and show you all how I did that. A uh, quick question: If you have um, if you have any questions or thoughts or ideas while uh, you watch this Facebook Live broadcast, share them in the comments. Um, feel free to ask those questions. Share any projects that you're doing. If you have any connections to what I'm sharing with you today, share those connections in the comments. The more you share in the the comments, the more we all benefit from each other. So. Toss those questions in there. I'll try to I'll try to answer them during the broadcast. If I don't answer them during the broadcast, I'll go back afterwards and I'll, I'll reply to your comments um, and, and answer your questions for you. Um, it's like Michael's got a, a great question in the comments already. Does CoSpaces work with Oculus Quest well? Um, yes, it does. Um, if you're not familiar, Oculus Quest is the standalone VR headset made by Oculus. It's a great, um, affordable uh, no wires attached, no high-end computer required uh, VR headset. And um, beginning of the school year, CoSpace has released the ability to um, both create and view CoSpace's EDU projects in the Oculus Quest browser in the headset. And um, it actually works really well. Um, it's all through the, um, the Oculus browser, just like you would create on... Um, uh, through uh, the web tool on a computer, but um, it does actually work really well. So again, if you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, toss them in the comments. I'll be checking back there frequently as much as I can while I share with you. And um, uh, let's get going. Okay, so the reason I mentioned this a few minutes ago is that the reason I'm bringing this uh, Facebook Live to all of you is because I, at the beginning of the school year, I got this great idea from someone on Twitter who created um, a Merge Cube experience for her students to introduce her classroom rules um, and classroom objectives to um, her students at the beginning of the year. 
using a CoSpaces EDU um, merge cube um, experience. And um, I love that idea. I thought that was a really cool, really interactive and engaging way to kickstart the year. Uh, typically, you know, the first couple of days of school or the first day it's we're all sitting down, I'm we're reading the rules and going over what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And that can be a pretty blob boring way to start the year. It's not a great way to get your kids excited about what they're going to do in your classroom, right? And so I thought this was a really cool way to to uh, engage them and get them excited about what's happening. Um, and so I created, I took that idea from um, that Twitter post and um, I uh, added some to it and made it more interactive for my students. So I created a CoSpaces EDU uh, merge cube um, experience that uh, introduced my technology students uh, to um, our learning goals for the year and then the experience transition transitions into uh, my four main rules that I want them to follow and um, be mindful of in the technology lab for the year and then from there it goes into a fun Mr. Fricano guessing game just to um, teach them a little bit more about who I am um, as their teacher and I made this interactive so I've got lots of um, interactive elements in there being able to click on objects and watching those objects do things and characters interacting with each other so let me show you that really quick if you're um, if you have CoSpaces EDU you can uh, scan the QR code hopefully it works with your video quality or you can uh, jump to that that CoSpaces.es website there slash 2 capital G capital Y lowercase y and uh, you can view um, this uh, interactive activity um, uh, in CoSpaces. If you if you're on the if you're on your computer, um, you can still interact with it on your computer as well. If you're on a mobile device, you can do so. Also, um, it works best with a merge cube, of course, but you don't necessarily have to have a merge cube. I'm, I'm going to show you that here on my computer. So I'm going to jump over to this activity in my CoSpaces account, and I'm going to show you this activity on my computer. So it's not the most, it's not the best merge cube experience, um, but uh, you, sh you should still be able to get a sense of how it works. So I'm going to play it. Okay. Okay. So here's my uh, my merge cube activity. Um, one thing I love is you know I, I can create this merge cube activity, and if I don't, my students don't have access to merge cubes or um, or. Uh, I want to show this to you and not want to worry about using the merge cube for now. I can show you the web version of this. So it just it's showing me the cube, and I'm just clicking and and moving it around to see the different sides. Okay. So the way this uh, this works is they start with this first merge cube scene. It welcomes them to our tech lab, and around the sides they learn our three main objectives for the school year. Um, so our our objectives for grade three are keyboarding skills. Uh, digital citizenship and becoming coders and 3D architects because my third graders use CoSpaces. Um, and we use several different tools for learning computer science and computational thinking. CoSpaces is one of them because of the CoBlox uh, tool built in. Okay, and then as they move around the cube, there are some interactive elements, right? So I show them this at the beginning of the activity that uh, some of these objects they can click on or, or tap on since they're using the merge cube by um, hovering their you know finger or hovering the the dot over the objects. So if I click on the laptop here, then we get a little bit of interactivity in the experience. They can click it multiple times. So here I'm just I've just programmed the hands to dance across the keyboard as if it's typing. And a, and a text panel that pops up that says, what will your typing speed be? Because we talk about words per minute and um, what, what keyboarding skills will help them with. So that's one interactive element. Here I've got the uh, in digital citizenship. I've got the, the stop light because in digital citizenship, green light means just right on the internet. That's one of the lessons they'll learn about. And I've got the key. I'm pretty proud of this one, clicking the key goes into the lock and um, locks up their privacy to protect them. I program the key to turn and then come back out again to reset. And then over here, I've got the uh, 
I wanted to uh, sort of expose them to what's possible in code spaces with the code locks tool. So when I click the car, <clears throat> excuse me, it shows them the code that I used to program this car in CodeBlox, which is something that my third graders will experience this year while using CoSpaces. So they're going to use CoSpaces to build lots of different experiences, but they're also going to um, learn how to use the CodeBlox uh, programming tool. So I didn't just want to show them a moving car. I wanted to show them what's making that car moves, what's happening behind the scenes. So I just captured a screenshot and inserted that as an image into the experience. So clicking the car activates that screenshot so they can see um, what kind of uh, what kind of code is, is making these objects do that okay so this first scene here it's teaching them their three goals right and then when they're done they click on rules so this rules is a button I'm going to show you how to make something like this but they click the rules button and it transitions them to the next scene um, where they learn about the rules of the tech lab so I have four rules in my tech lab and I wanted them to, uh, I wanted to um, share with them those rules, but I, I told them, I, I don't want to just tell you about the rules and we talk about it. That's pretty boring. It's not very engaging. They're not going to internalize those rules um, uh, by just telling it to them and having them talk about it. So I wanted to uh, allow them to experience those rules on their own individually. And here they see all, <clears throat> all four rules. <clears throat> Excuse me. They see all four rules here, okay? But they're not just reading the rules. Each each side here has um, a play button, and when they activate that play button, I've created um, an interactive. Uh, I've I've programmed objects to interact with each other, uh, and they're demonstrating an example of how students can follow that rule. So let's see rule number one. So rule number one of my class is treat our tools like they are your own. At my school, my kids have, uh, we're a one-to-one -one iPad school, so they have iPads with them. They bring them to tech class with them. They uh, transition to different classes uh, with their iPads throughout the day. And so rule number one is showing a girl holding her iPad um, appropriately. It's going to allow her to treat that tool responsibly. Um, and at my school, we, we talk about uh, the, uh, the iPad hug, right? hugging their iPad with two hands, always holding their device with two hands as they walk. And so one example of rule number one is walking with your iPad while holding it with two hands. And then if you move on to rule number two, be helpful, be kind. A simple rule, there's lots of ways we can demonstrate that rule. Um, uh, so when I press play here, we've got an example of a boy um, who's not sure how to work his robot. And so this uh, girl's offering to help him, right? It's an example of showing how we can be helpful and kind to each other and talk about how like you know when you help each other you're helping me and um, here's an example of that. and I, I'm pretty proud of this I programmed a little hand with a heart that pops out of the cube um, that talks about that says choose kindness this is an example of how we can be helpful and kind to each other in the technology lab as opposed to somewhere else and then rule three create appropriately with curiosity and for fun so here I've got a bunch of kids around a table. They're saying, let's create something helpful for our school. And they're um, agreeing with her. Me too, that sounds fun, right? So thinking about, one thing to think about how when we create things in the technology lab, um, you know, how can we be curious and how can we create something that's appropriate, not just appropriate in terms of school, but appropriate in helping others and you know, doing something that uh, could benefit others in our community but also having fun with it too. So here we've got a bunch of characters interacting and having a conversation with each other. And then my last rule is uh, the ask three before me rule. So I want them to get in the habit of thinking about what, they're, what, what they want help with, thinking about what they're doing, um, using each other as a resource, and also being able to know where to go for other resources. And so here I've got a... Uh, um, uh, two characters here interacting with each other. And they're showing two different examples of the S3 before me rule. So the first first kid saying, like, Mr. Fricano, I don't know. Oh, wait, let me think about this first. I got it. I know what it is. That's the first ask, right? And this kid's asking his friend for help. And he says, sure. 
Okay. So that's this is scene two of my of my interactive activity. So again, um, I create I built separate scenes around the side, um, and the button activates those objects interacting with each other. Okay. And then on the last, once they get through the goals and the rule and the and the rules, then they can play a fun guessing game. And so on scene three of my cube is the Mr. Fricano guessing game. And so here, uh, each side asks a question about me to, to the students, just to um, help them learn a little bit about who I am. So they're uh, more comfortable in class and we, you know, we, we building that, that uh, teacher-student relationship with each other. And uh, what I've done here is I basically just have a, a question through a text box and each of these options are basically acting like buttons. And when you press that button, um, it's activating a, um, a choice panel. And it's telling you whether, um, I'm sorry, a text panel, pop-up text panel. And it's telling you whether that option is correct or incorrect. Right? So here, what is Mr. Fricano's favorite food? So I've got a pizza and ice cream and a bowl of spaghetti. And these are each treat, being treated as buttons. So when I click on a button, a text panel pops up and tells you if you're wrong or correct. And here, ice cream is not my favorite. It's yummy, but it's not my favorite. And then I click on pizza to guess again. And nope, it's spaghetti. Spaghetti is my favorite. Mr. Fricano loves spaghetti with meatballs. So I'm using uh, what's called a text panel co-block um, that when the this one of these objects is clicked, it activates a text panel, and that text panel reveals whether you're correct or not. So I've got that what is my favorite color, same things happening here. I've got um, how many words per minute can Mr. Fricano type. They think I'm I'm super Superman here. That have been guessed 200, but that's not my, my words per minute. Same things happening here. So again, these are just all buttons. I've turned, the, I made them buttons, and they're each activating their own text panel, revealing the, the correct or incorrect answer. That's my, my fun guessing game at the end of the cube. Something a little um, enjoyable and fun at the end. Um, and, uh, and that's it. So again, scene one is the introduction with the goals. Scene two of my cube are uh, the rules. And then scene three is my guessing game. So I'm going to show you how to make some of the, the main elements in this experience. Now again, I'm I'm doing this as a merge cube uh, add-on experience, but the things that I'm showing you don't don't have they're not specific to a merge cube, CoSpaces Edu experience. You can create buttons in regular VR experiences. You can create these quizzes in in regular VR. Um, they don't, it's not specific to to a merge cube add-on experience. Here's what that looks like on in the creation side. Okay, so you can see. Um, all the elements that are that are um, activated by pushing the button that you can see here in, in the creation tool itself okay, but I've programmed them to disappear when the experience starts and then they only appear when you in when you click um, an object or a button okay so uh, I'll show you a quick um, here let's do the, the car here I'm going to give you a, a sneak peek into the code block. So here's the car. So what I've done is I've, I've programmed the car when clicked to follow the path, also to reveal the text panel and the image while the car is going around the path. So in my, in my code tool here, um, here's the car. Okay, and I'll just kind of quickly walk through this. So what's happening is... Um, when play is clicked and the experience starts, I'm setting the opacity of all of these objects to zero. So they disappear, they're hidden, they're, they're basically invisible objects, okay? And then only when the car is clicked, the um, opacity of those objects are then switched to 100%, so they become visible again. Um, they're, they're no longer invisible, you can see them. So clicking the car makes them visible and then I've got a couple things happening here. So when the car is clicked, it goes around the path and 
the panel and the image appear at the same time. So I've got those things happening in a parallel, in a run parallel. So the car says uh, beep beep for five seconds. And then um, the, uh, the car, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. And then the car is moved on the path for five seconds. Right? And then after all that happens, then the opacity of the objects goes back to zero. They disappear again. So they come in into the experience. Kid can see them. And then once it's done, they disappear again. And then, and then they can click on the car and, and activate it all over again. So that's an example of um, what you, how you can create um, objects to interact with each other and how you can have the user interact with those objects as well. Okay. This, um, this scene, just so you know, if you're interested in this, it is, let me go back, here we go. Um, it is in the gallery, the CoSpaces gallery. The gallery is open to the public. Um, you don't, so you don't have to have a CoSpaces account to view it. Um, if you have CoSpaces Pro, you do have the ability to remix the space and you can make a copy of it yourself and then feel free to tweak it, um, adjust it to your, your own classroom and um, uh, make it your own. So I've made it available publicly in the gallery and it's set to remix. So uh, feel free to check that out and, you, and remixing it lets you dive into the back end to see how all the code works for all the different interactive elements. Um, okay, so let's begin with how to uh, make objects interact with each other. Okay, so I'm gonna set up a new space here. Jump in. Okay, so when I say objects interacting with each other, in, you know, when you first start a CoSpaces experience, you're dragging in objects. So I'm going to drag in a girl, and I'm going to drag in a dog. Okay, and at CoSpaces, at its basic level, your students are creating these static scenes, right? So static meaning the objects are stuck in place. They don't, they don't move. They don't interact with each other. What I like to describe to students is that you know, it's like a frozen moment in time is what you're creating, right? It's a, it's a static scene. But if you want your characters to move and to have dialogue with each other and you want the dog to chase something or you want the airplane to fly across the screen, you want to create um, an interactive um, uh, experience. And to do that, you have to code it. You have to use the code blocks tool. Okay. And so to create objects that inter interact with each other, you have to program them to do that. And then your, your scene is no longer static, right? There's, there's action, there's interactivity, there's things happening, there's experiences happening within the space. Okay, so here, let's say I have a girl and I have a dog and I want the girl to call the dog over to her. Okay. So to do that, um, I first I want to bring in any objects that I want to interact with each other. So I've brought in my girl, I've brought in my dog from the library, in the library section. And again, remember I said this is a drag and drop, so I'm dragging in these objects. Okay. And any object that you want to program with code blocks, you have to turn the coding uh, switch for each of those objects to on. So I'm going to double click the girl. When you double click an object in CoSpaces, you get its its object menu. And every object has a code setting. And in the code setting is a switch called use in code blocks. And in order to program with this girl and this dog, I have to turn both of their switches to on. And that's going to allow those objects to show up in the code tool, which will allow me to program them to interact with each other. So I'm going to do that for the girl. And I'm going to simplify this girl's name so it's easier to find. I'm going to call her girl. And then we have dog. And I'm going to turn on using code blocks for the dog. Okay, now I'm ready to code. So I'm going to go up to the code tool up in the corner here, up here in the top right corner. This is your code tool. And uh, in CoSpaces, you can program your scene with code blocks, which is CoSpaces block based programming language. If your students are already using code.org um, or Scratch uh, to create programs and games and things like that, they're going to be very familiar 
and it's going to be very easy for them to adapt to co-blocks because again it's all block based and, and in fact when I when I use uh, co-spaces and co-blocks with my third graders they're always asking me does this does this have that block like scratch has and I have to tell them I, I, I don't know go go search you know look for it what what kind of block are you looking for so they're always making connections to other programming tools and languages that they're using and that's great for this because there's lots of uh, coding platforms out there that use block-based languages and so it makes it really easy for our kids to adapt okay okay so here I've got this is the coblox tool and I've got my panel of blocks okay? and you always start with a when play is clicked actually before I do that I'm gonna up here is where you can create uh, multiple sets of scripts, right? So I can add more Coblox script. This is a great way to organize your program so that you don't have everything happening in one script and then it gets be this like long jumbled mess of code. Um, so I'm gonna rename this and call this uh, let's see, girl Right, so I always teach my students, and I, me too, I get in the habit of naming my scripts based on what it is I want to have happen in that script. Okay, okay so when play clicked. So that, that means that when, when the experience is started, when your audience presses play on your, your co-space, then whatever's connected below it will begin to happen, depending on what you have there. So here I want the, the girl to, I'm going to have her kneel down. And then I'm going to have the dog run to her. And then I'm going to have the dog sit. Okay? And so what I, what I just described there are two different kinds of blocks. One block is changing the animation of an object. And the other block is, is the, the move block, moving the dog to the girl. Okay? Remember, if you guys have any questions or I'm going too fast or I skip something, I, um, ask it in the, the chat, the comments. I'm, I'm following along with you. Okay? Okay, so... The first block I want is a set animation. So that's an action block. Bring this out a little bit. There we go. That's an animation block. Okay, and you're by default, let me back out here. Uh, most objects have uh, a menu of animations that can, you know, there's there are quick, easy ways to make your objects move or, or do something without code. Um, but they stay, they're stationary, but they might like jump up and down and cheer or show an angry face or I'm gonna make the girl kneel in a second but I want those things but in this case I want those things to happen uh, together with an in and with another object right so I'm gonna use set animation and I'm gonna change it to girl you see how I have a menu of objects that I can set choose from so when I turn the switch on for use in coblox those objects become available in the in the object menu of these blocks. If you don't see an object here, that usually means you didn't turn it on to using Coblox. And that's a mistake that my students often make. They forget to flip that switch. So I tell them, did you go and turn it on for Coblox? And then they'll go and check that. But here, I'm going to set the girl. And every depending on the object, they'll have different animations. So human characters have different animations from a dog character, right? Um, so here I'm going to have her kneel. So when play clicked, set animation of girl to kneel. Okay, and just like any other programming language, the way this works is the the the, the script will start from the top, and it'll play the next block down, right? And it'll go in that sequential order. So the first thing is the girl's going to kneel, and then I'm going to have I'm going to set the animation of dog. And I'm going to set him to run. So this, this what this animation will do is it'll make the dog look like he's running. But he's not running anywhere specific. He's running in place. But I want to give him the appearance uh, that he's running. Because then I'm going to move him to the girl. I'm going to have him move across the scene towards the girl. Okay. So I've set the animation of girl to kneel and the animation of dog to run. We can see what this looks like. I always encourage my students to test as they go. Don't do a bunch of things first and then test it because it's going to be hard to figure out where the bug is or the problem is, right? So if I press play, actually before I do that, I'm going to adjust my camera so we can easily see what's happening here when we press play. So the camera in CoSpace is, is you. That's 
you become the camera when you play a co-spaces experience. So there we go. Let's see. So the girl should um, kneel down and the dog should start running in place because I've set those two animations. There we go. That's what it looks like. To see how the dog animation is running, but he's in place. I haven't set him to move yet. Okay. And I can see this code in real time. I can see what's happening. There we go. See, I'm going to reset. You can see the code. Okay, let me back out to the edit tool. Okay, so you've got that. Now I'm going to program the dog to move. So the dog's going to run, and then he's going to move. So now it's going to look like he's actually running to the girl. So I'm going to use the move block under transform. And uh, I'm going to move the dog. I'm going to guess here and say three meters forward. And in a move block, you have six different directions you can move depending on the object. I'm going to move the dog forward. And I'm going to have it move three meters forward in one second. We'll see how fast that is. Okay, A meter in co-spaces is a large block. So you see there's let me go let me let me go to the snapping tool and change it to one meter. There. So this is a meter. One large block is one meter in co-spaces. So I'm telling the dog to move one, two, three meters forward. And adjust his direction. Three meters forward. So hopefully that brings it the dog right up to the girl. Okay. I'm gonna jump back a little bit. So I've told, I've programmed the, the girl to kneel, dog to run, dog to move. Let's see what happens. Hey, pretty good. Now, you see what's happening there? The dog is still running because that animation is still active. When you set an animation of a character, uh, that animation runs constantly until you, unless you change the animation or you have, or you uh, set it, you have to set the animation to stop. Okay, so let's do that. So the move worked right up to the girl. Now I'm going to uh, set animation of the dog to sit instead. So once the dog gets to the girl after moving, the dog's going to sit. Pretty simple. Let's see. There. How does that look? Okay, so we got some animations in there, some move blocks. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to throw another one in there called a say block. And I'm going to make the girl say uh, come oops come here buddy okay so I just tossed in a quick say block and so now what's happening is the girl's gonna say come here buddy then the girl's gonna kneel the dog's gonna run dog's gonna move dog's gonna sit let's see what happens there we go Okay. So that's a simple, it's a simple example of creating um, a scene where objects can interact with each other. And it's all based on what you want those objects to do and what you want them and what order you want them to happen in. Um, so when I, when I work with my students on this, sometimes I'll have them sort of draft or sketch out on paper what those actions are and write them in order. So they're planning their code before they actually program it. Right? So they'll write down, well, I want the girl to say this first. Okay, that's line number one. Then I want the girl to do to kneel. Okay, that's line number two. And they'll write this down or type it out in a, in a document or in a note uh, and plan that out, thinking ahead of what, those, what the step-by-step -step, um, blocks should be in order to create that interaction. And oftentimes they'll, they'll go in and start programming it afterwards and they'll think of something else. Oh, I want, I want the girl to do this next. Actually, I want the girl to do this before this. And so they'll, they'll make adjustments and tweak their code from there. But this is a simple, inter simple interaction of two objects um, interacting with each other. So that's what's happening um, back here in my interactive experience. Let me go to the rules scene. And so here are all of the, the interactive objects, right? So each side has a scene, if you remember previously and when that play is is clicked those objects are being revealed and then they're um, interacting with each other and so let's see rule number three 
is here. So this is rule number three. Okay, and so what's happening is when play is clicked, uh, yeah, when play is clicked, so when the experience starts, all of these objects are disappearing, so we don't see them yet. And then when the play button, when rule the rule two button, oops, rule three, when the rule three button is clicked, their their opacities change to reveal them. We're waiting a couple of seconds for that to happen, and then they're talking to each other. So they're saying they're each saying something, and then they're dialoguing. That's what these save save blocks are for. And then their opacity is set back to zero, so they disappear. Right, so it's simple. It looks like a complex scene with lots of different objects, but really all that's happening is one saying something after the other, and then they're disappearing. Okay, so it looks really complex. looks like a lot of blocks, but you see it's just a repeat of a lot of similar blocks. Okay, and so that's, that's how I've programmed my objects to interact with each other in this particular scene. Okay? And in this case, I'm... Uh, having certain things happen when the play button is clicked, and then I'm having my objects interact with each other when this play button on the cube is clicked. And that, that's an event block. So when object is clicked, or in, if you're on a mobile device, it's when you tap it. Okay, if you guys have any questions or you're interested in exploring something more, toss them in the, the comments. I'd be happy to um, answer them if it's uh, not too complex of a question, but uh, let me know your thoughts and your ideas in the comments about these these things. Okay, so that's uh, the first thing I wanted to show you: just creating um, a simple example of how to make objects interact with each other using code blocks. And there's lots of different kinds of interactions. Um, you can make a character say or think um, things. You can move objects. Um, you can turn them um, in the, uh, when I reveal the tutorials, the downloadable tutorials a little later, the example that I have in that tutorial um, actually looks like this. And so what I'm programming is, oh, that didn't work. Oh, I got a bug in there. Did you guys see that? The dog went backward instead of forward. Okay. So when when you run your program and you see something bad happening, you know you got a bug, and you have to debug it. So I, I know what's happening there. Let's try again. Okay, and then she stands up and cheers, and then the dog runs back, and then he runs in circles. <laughs> I did a little uh, extra that he's chasing his tail. Okay, so this is the example you can share with your students in the downloadable tutorial that I'll have for you in a little bit. Okay, so that's creating a uh, creating a way for objects to interact. The next thing I want to show you is how to create a button. It's actually really simple. Um, in my Merge Cube experience, I've got lots of buttons. Some buttons take you to different scenes. Some buttons reveal um, characters interacting with each other. Some buttons um, bring objects to life. Um, and you can have buttons do all kinds of things. Some buttons reveal a text panel that gives you the, the correct or the incorrect answer. Okay, so uh, I will, I'm going to need to create a new space. I'll do a, a merge cube space here, okay? So just like in my, my class example, my tech lab rules example, I've got buttons on the sides of the cubes, okay? So to create a button, you could do this lots of different ways, but I'll show you the simplest way. Um, what I do is I use, uh, I go into library, and I use a building. I am going, I'm going, sorry, I go to the building category. And I use a cylinder. Because it's shaped like a button. Okay? So I bring in a cylinder. Like so. Here's my cylinder. And I'm going to make it a little bigger. I'll make a big button. Okay. Now, this is sort of like lends itself to what I always tell talk to my students about in code spaces is you have to think outside the box here, right? If you look at a cylinder just as a cylinder, you might not see a button there, right? That doesn't look like your standard button. It's a giant cylinder, right? But you have to understand and know what your what's possible with that object in order to turn it into something else. And in this case, I'm I can see the cylinder 
as a button because if I flatten it and then flip it up and then attach it to a side, now I have a button, right? And so this, this is a really hard concept that I, I struggle with my students is to get them to imagine how we can be creative with the objects that we have available to us. Because for some things, like, for example, I had a student who wanted to make fire. And there is no fire object in CoSpaces EDU, right? There's no fire, right? But what one student ended up doing was she found a lightning bolt. And she brought a bunch of lightning bolts into her scene and made them all different fire colors and made it look like fire. And that's thinking outside the box, right? And so you might not have a specific item available to you in the library, but what can you use what you do already have and turn it into something that you don't? And so here I've, took, I've taken a cylinder and I've turned it into a giant button just by flattening it and then rotating it on, on a, a one of its axes and then attaching it to the side. And so here I have a, a button. Um, and now I'm going to uh, change the material of this button. Okay, so I have a giant red button there. Okay, right now it's just a flat cylinder. Okay, and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the upload menu and go to the images tab. And I'm going to search for a play button image. So I want to put that triangular play symbol on the surface of my button to turn it into a play button. So I'm going to scroll through. I know there's a good one here. There we go. This one's uh, got a transparent background. There we go. Okay, so I just, so what I did was I, I went to upload images. I did a web search. So, so one really cool thing about CoSpace is it got, has built in image search uh, in the uh, CoSpaces tool. So your kids don't have to go out to another tab, find a picture, upload it into CoSpaces. None of that is required. There's a built-in image search, as well as these other searches here. But um, when I, what's nice is when I use that image there, it's added to my image library now. So it's something that I could use multiple times if I, if I want to. Okay, so I've got my play button. I'm going to attach that play button to the surface of my cylinder here okay and then i'm going to quickly make it bigger there so now i have a giant cylinder with a giant play button okay now i want to program that button to do something in my scene when i click or tap it okay so let's say for example when i push the button i want fancy boy here to walk across walk across this side I'm gonna make it a little bigger there okay so when my audience clicks that button or taps that button I want this I want this character to walk across the side okay now you would think that you would want to make the cylinder itself um, usable in Coblox and that's not true here okay what your audience is interacting with is the image on the surface of the button okay and that's that image is covering the entire surface of my cylinder and so when they tap what they think they think they're tapping on the cylinder but they're actually tapping on this image and that's that's a that's a tough trick that students have to get used to they think they have to program the cylinder to do something when clicked that's not true in this case it's um, when I'm going to change this, the play image is clicked. So I'm going to use the play image in Coblox. And when my audience clicks that play image, I'm going to make that character walk. Okay, so now we're ready. So I'm going to wait, got to turn the character on. We'll just call this guy boy. Turn him on for code. Okay. Blocks. All right, so here, when play is clicked, I don't want this to happen as soon as they play the scene. I want this to happen when they click on the play button. So I'm going to use 
um, an event block called when object clicked. And instead of boy, I'm going to make the, the play image. So when play image is clicked, what do I want to have happen? I want the boy to walk across the scene. So I'm going to move this out. I'm going to move boy, uh, let's say four meters forward in one second. Okay, now we can test it. So play. When I click the button, the boy walks. Super simple. Right? So really, so the, the important thing here is that the way the button works is that I'm using an event block when that button or that the surface of that button is clicked. What do I want to have happen inside of it? And you saw some examples of that in my my tech rules. Uh, merge cube scene, right? So when they press the play button on a rule side, um, a scene is revealed. Those characters interact with each other, talk, and objects move, and then the scene disappears. And that's all happening inside of a when object is clicked block. All that's happening within it. Okay? And that's essentially how a button works. Now, I could be a little bit more creative here and make it look like a real button. Okay, so the, the, what I mean by that is I could say uh, when play is clicked, we'll bring in two move blocks, move, uh, actually, no. okay, I'm going to make the cylinder on for code. Here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make the cylinder move down 0.3 meters. And I'm going to have the cylinder move um, up point, oops, point 0.3 meters. What I'm doing here is I'm making the button push inward and then come out again as if it's a physical button that they're pushing. And this just makes the scene more interesting, right? It makes it seem more real. So now when I play, let's see, if I click... It's going to go in and out, and then the character walks. Pretty cool, yeah? So just with two simple move blocks, you can give that button, you can make that button seem more realistic in the environment. So when they tap on it, it's actually being pushed in, and then it's coming back out again. And then after that, those two move blocks occur, then what happens next? You want your characters to talk, you want your characters to move, you want something to be revealed or disappear. Okay, so um, there in is a button. Now, if you remember back in my uh, my tech lab rules experience, in my guessing game, right? I didn't make these are but these are these are buttons here. I used a different shape, but these I'm also using as buttons as well, right? So that when um, when ice cream is clicked. I'm showing an info panel that's telling you that you're wrong, right? So these 3D objects are acting as buttons as well, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be a shape. I've got some shapes here. You see like squares there with text panels. I've got 3D objects that are acting as buttons, right? Or I've got pictures that are acting as buttons. So this is, uh, where is favorite color? Oh, there is vacation. So here, when the image, when the beach image is clicked, then it's showing them an info panel. Okay, so these are acting as buttons too. I'm just using objects in different ways as buttons. Okay, so it doesn't just have to be a shape, but that's a good starting point. Okay, All right. So that's how you create a button. It's a simple way of how you create. It's just the the the, the main, the most important thing is you're using a when object is clicked block and then whatever happens inside of it is what's going to happen when that object is clicked and that could be anything it could be anything you want to have happen you could even uh so um when these buttons are pushed here it's i'm changing the scene and that's happening here so the rule when the rules button is clicked when back to rules is clicked i'm going to scene rules Right? Two simple blocks, right? I'm just changing the scene 
when that button is clicked and it's taking us back to scene number two which is called rules so that's a quick that's a, a great way to transition from one scene to the next create an interactive button interactive button that transitions the scene for you that changes the scene and i'm doing that with two buttons so one goes to rules one goes back to scene number one which is the intro scene okay all right i'm going a little almost out of time here i don't want to keep you guys too long Again, let me know if you have any questions i see your your long Com complex question there, Michael. I'll get to that a little later. Good question. But uh, let me show you how to uh, do, do the guessing game. Because the guessing game is basically just incorporating um, the button element and adding um, a text panel. So here, so for example, what is Mr. Fercano's favorite food? That's just all I'm doing is putting a text box on the surface of the cube. Okay, and then here I've got three objects positioned on the cube, on the, on the surface of the cube. Okay, and I've got these objects turned on for, for code, for code blocks. Each of them are turned on and I've named them appropriately. Pizza, ice cream, and spaghetti. Okay, and for my guessing game, what I'm doing is I'm using a, a block called... Um, an info panel. So this is an action block. And it's called show info with title. I'll show you here. Here. Okay. Oops. Info. Oops. Info. There we go. So I'm using an info block. And that's that box that's popping up on the screen to reveal if the answer is correct or not. Okay. And so the way to do this in my cube is I'm saying when play is clicked and I'm using a uh, parallel run parallel block starts like this and the it's important to use a run parallel here because you want the experience to constantly check if they're clicking on one of the the guessing game answer choices and a parallel will do that because remember the way the code works is it looks at one block at a time in the sequence and if the the first block hasn't run yet the rest of the blocks aren't going to run either because it's running in that specific order but if you want blocks to run simultaneously at the same time you have to do that in a parallel and so that's why i've got a parallel block here so that each answer choice that they're able to click on is uh, constantly running and being checked to see if they're if the user if the audience is tapping on it. And so I've got one, two, three, four parallel sections here, each with a an event block for when object is clicked, and within that is the info panel that pops up. And so all four of these uh, event blocks are running at the same time and constantly checking if the user has clicked on or tapped on one of them. And that, that's, that's the important thing with a parallel, right? Because if I didn't have a parallel, and I just had all of these lined up, then the program is going to check to see if this is clicked first. And if that hasn't been clicked yet, the next block is, is going to be able to run at all. It's, gonna, it's, it's never going to happen. So the parallel will, will allow all four of these to run simultaneously. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if that's clear in the comments or not, if you... If you that, if you understand how that works. Okay, so that's why I have the parallel. And then when uh, object is clicked, an info panel. And the way info panel works is you have your title across the top, you have um, your text that's shown below the title, and then you can choose to have an image. And so all I did for the image was I searched for, um, uh, you know, happy faces and sad faces in the web search. And then once those have been added to my image library, then I can use them in um, the menu here. So all these pictures are the images I found and have added to my image library. And they all have funny names because they're they're based on the names that are given to them in the web search. And unfortunately, there's no way to change those names, so I just have to kind of match it up. But uh, the sad monkey face is called locking stitch markers. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but uh, 
I know that that sad monkey face, oh, I'm sorry, no, sad, the sad face, face here, is begins with locking stitch, and so I just got to match it up. Hopefully that makes sense. But you can choose an image to be displayed there. And then I've just set each, each button that they click on to match, right? So here you can see that uh, purple is not my favorite color. It's wrong. Blue is the correct answer. Green is wrong, and yellow is wrong. And now when I play, there we go. Purple. This is what the info panel looks like. Green, same. Yellow, same. And blue is the correct. Okay. So that, that's how I, I created my fun, quick Mr. Furcano guessing game. Okay. See, those are buttons. Images. Family. Okay, and so that's just combining uh, info panel with buttons to cr and uh, to create a fun guessing game for my student. And this could be something your kids could very easily create once you give them those basics right, of how to create buttons, how to use a an event block to activate that that button, and what is the action that's going to happen when that when that button is clicked or when that object is clicked. Okay. So we've gone through how to how to make objects interact with each other, um, how to uh, back how to build and code a clickable button, and how to create a fun guessing game quiz in CoSpaces EDU. Hopefully those those uh, steps were clear enough. Um, you can always come back to this video. This video is being recorded. It will be um, available in the event. I'll make it available on YouTube as well, and it'll be on the resource page here. But uh, if you want this presentation that I'm showing you right now and all the resources for this um, Facebook Live, you can go here to this bit.ly, bit.ly slash COSAR activity, uh, COSAR activity. That'll take you to my resource page on the ARVR EDU hub. And this presentation is embedded there. The, re the video recording will be there um, by the end of today. Um, as well as a bunch of links and resources, and uh, the your way to to uh, access and download two CoSpaces EDU Code Blocks tutorials. Okay, a couple things before we get to that though. There are some great online VR communities. I think most of you are coming from those communities. Um, so, virtual augmented reality for education. That's my Facebook community I, I manage. Uh, I think most of you are members there, and thank you for being members there. Um, but if you're not, feel free to click the links on the website resource or in the slide deck to access it. And CoSpaces EDU has their own great, um, engaging, active uh, online community. It's um, on Facebook as well. You can click those links on this slide. There's a link to the communities in on the resource page as well. And all right, to get, oh, that's not correct. I made a, a mistake. I'll fix this. But these are your CoSpaces EDU tutorials, CoBlox tutorials. So I've created two, um, one page, um, hopefully simple to follow, step-by-step uh, -step guides on, on two of the three tutorials that I walked through today. One is how to code objects to interact, giving you the, the uh, six steps, and then um, how to create an interactive button. And on each of those tutorials, um, you've got the steps broken down and explained with uh, screenshot images. Each tutorial also has a challenge. So the tutorial gives you the basic steps, but the challenge will uh, hopefully push you and your students a little further to think about how we can we can elevate that that um, experience. Um, so there's a challenge, and then each tutorial comes with a sample co-space that uh, if you have CoSpaces EDU Pro, you can remix that sample, or your students can remix that sample and um, sort of you know take a peek behind the scenes to see how the co-blox um, is being used and how the, the scene has been, has been built, um, just to give them help if they need it. Um, to get these two uh, tutorials, just visit this link here, this bit.ly. It's also linked up on the website as well, bit.ly slash tutorials one um, to get access, yeah, uh, I would love it if you signed up for the AR VR EDU Hub newsletter. And as soon as you sign up for that, you'll get a second email with a download link to those two tutorials as PDFs. And you're welcome to um, uh, to print those out, use them in your class, 
provided as a resource for your students, really, um, hopefully really useful tutorials. And I'll be, I'll be creating more of these um, along the way. This is a great way to get started. So that's how you can get your free Cospaces EDU Coblox tutorials. Uh, Jacob asked a quick question in the video. He said, will it be possible to watch this again? You bet. So this is being recorded. It'll, be, uh, it'll still be in this event. I'll also be putting it up on YouTube. And the video recording will be embedded on the website, again, which is here. So this is the presentation and resources page for this Facebook Live today. Okay. Um, I've been talking a lot about Pro. Cospace is a great tool, and with great tools, uh, you know, comes cost, right? We can't, can't have everything for free in life, but Cospace's EDU is definitely a tool you want to consider and possibly invest in. You can do so much with it. Um, it's not, it doesn't have to be just that one-off project uh, during the school. You can do lots of different things with it. And um, if you want to check it out, if you want to get your feet wet and see um, what might be possible, um, I've got a trial code that you can use. This is my ambassador trial code. Um, I get no benefit from this. I'm making no money off of this. It's just my way of sharing with my online community. But uh, if you sign up for Cospace's EDU uh, basic account, and then use trial code um, COS Michael FR. That'll give you 30 days of CoSpaces EDU Pro for free for you and 99 students. And that includes the Merge Cube add on for 30 days as well. So, 30 days is a, I think it's a good amount of time to do one solid CoSpaces EDU project to really get in there and see what's possible. And then, if you know, depending on what your decision is, you can either choose to pay for it moving forward or if you don't, your account will just revert back to a, a free basic account. But um, check that out. Uh, uh, this, again, uh, trial code for 30 days of pro for you and 99 students. Um, and then uh, something else I'm, I'm offering, I've just released my first um, uh, online self-paced course on the ARVR EDU hub. It's called Google Street View for the K-12 classroom. I'm going to be putting together a um, um, uh, lots more courses. I'm working on some CoSpaces EDU courses and courses on other AR and VR tools for the classroom. But this is my first one. It's on one of my other favorite VR applications for the classroom, Google Street View. And it's a, a course that's going to walk you through step by step on how to use Google Street View and how to use it effectively in your classroom. And so what you get from this course, you're going to become a Street View educator expert. Uh, with a certificate of completion. You're going to learn how to find and share relevant 360 images in Google Street View. Um, you're going to gain confidence uh, in using it with your students. Um, you'll gain access to a private, exclusive Facebook group for members of the course, where you have direct access to me as your, your, um, your instructor, and I'll be helping you along the way. I've got lots of downloadable goodies from this course as well, including a Google Street View lesson planner, um, a Street View user guide that you can print out and give to your students while they're using it, as well as a downloadable health and safety in VR script that you can use in your classroom with your students um, when you begin to use virtual reality in your classroom. And you can get all this, you can get the course. Um, it's uh, being offered for $75. It's a one-time fee. You get unlimited access to the course and the Facebook group. And um, I'll, cons I'll, I'll be improving that course. I'll be adding more resources to it along the way. So what you see now is definitely not going to be what you'll see later on. It's going it's to get better. Um, and um, I believe if you go to the course page, courses.arvredu.hub.com, there is a discount there somewhere that will give you the course for $50 for this coming week only. So check that out. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate all of you sticking with me, asking great questions. If you did ask any questions that I didn't answer in the comments, I'll get to those in just a few minutes. And uh, make sure you uh, visit the website resource for this Facebook Live. I'll be putting the recording uh, on that website, as well as all the, the goodies and resources um, that you'll need, excuse me, that you'll need to get started with CoSpaces EDU. Check out arvredu.hub.com and uh, be active in the, in the communities, guys. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you for the next Facebook Live broadcast.